He dreamed it, he planned it, he slept it, he talked about it, he designed, he shopped, he executed a plan that was astoundingly complex and vicious. to tie a Sioux Falls man to the kidnapping and the rape of Piper Striley. I mean, the thing is, I've been in this business a long time, a long time. <clears throat> She's dead. Prosecutors have been presenting their case from duct tape to DNA for two weeks, trying to link Robert Leroy Anderson to the kidnapping of Piper Striley from her Canastota home. A guy with duct tape and receipts and paint and handcuffs and gun casings and blood and fibers and hair all hanging off of him. He's covered with evidence. It's taped on. It's stuck to him. Attorney General Mark Barnett says Anderson will be charged with murder if and when Demansky and Striley are located. So that work continues today and every day until they're found. Good afternoon, I'm Don Jorgensen. Coming up on Midday, week three of the Robert Leroy Anderson murder trial. I'm Jessica Armstrong. How did investigators come upon pieces of Piper Striley's shirt? I'll tell you in just a couple minutes. One by one, the jurors sounded confident as they announced their decision that yes, Anderson killed those two young mothers. Even though he faces death, Anderson still isn't ready to talk about it. Nothing I'll lay to a hammer. We're handing out those flyers to all the truckers, just in case you see them. Truckers coming in and out of John Morrell are heading down the road with an eye out for Larissa Demansky. It's been 12 days since the 29-year-old woman was seen walking out of the night shift at Morrell. Today, the meatpacker is handing out posters to drivers. It's as though she vanished without a trace. It's been six months since Larissa Demansky disappeared. Kelloland's Jessica Armstrong has been following this case since the beginning, and she joins us now live. Jessica? Doug, I'm at John Morrell. This is where Larissa Demansky was last seen as she was going to her car at the end of the night shift. While some fear she may be dead, her family and friends still pray for her safe return. Bill Demansky goes to work each day, hoping his wife will be there when he comes home. While he works as a carpet layer, Demansky's thoughts often drift to his missing wife, Larissa. Two things keeping my hope alive. First, he's too good a wife to give hope on her that quickly. And the other thing, my gut is too big that he wouldn't be able to answer my prayers. All anxious to have her back and happy to do whatever we can to, to help in that regard. And the citizen group that searched and sent out flyers is now asking Larissa's co-workers to help. Friends of Larissa are hoping someone will remember something. Good afternoon. There's an arrest in the Piper Jean Striley case. Striley has not been found, but 26-year-old Robert Leroy Anderson was arrested at 2 o'clock this morning. He spent the night in the Minnehaha County Jail and is on his way at this hour to Mitchell for his first court appearance. So what is the background on Anderson? Kettleland's Vernon Brown has been investigating his past. And Vernon, Sioux Falls police have been saying there might be a connection between the Striley case and Larissa Demansky's disappearance two years ago. What would that connection be? Doug, the connection is right behind me, the John Morrell meatpacking plant. Demansky, the Demanskys worked side by side next to Robert Leroy Anderson five years ago. Larissa Demansky's husband, Bill, tells us he and his wife worked with Robert Leroy Anderson on the ham boning line at Morrell in 1991. The Demanskys weren't friends with Anderson. In fact, Bill says he and Larissa avoided him because Anderson made sexual comments about all the women, including his own wife, Elaine, who worked on the same line. Sioux Falls Police Lieutenant Gary Folkerts has had Larissa's file on his desk for two years. He stopped short of calling Anderson's arrest the big break they need. It's taken a while, but I think uh, it's, it's, going to, uh, it's going to be resolved. I don't know if it's going to be resolved 
with this thing, but it, I'm saying that eventually I feel strongly if it's going to happen during my career or not. I, I certainly hope it does, but if it doesn't, then it, but it will be resolved. Anderson has little as far as a criminal record, a few traffic violations, and a conviction for impersonation to deceive a law enforcement officer. Today's search for 27-year-old Piper Striley is by boat. The McCook County Sheriff and a game warden are scouring the edges of Lake Vermilion. Robert Leroy Anderson isn't talking to law enforcement, neither is his family. His mother lives in North Sioux Falls but wouldn't comment. Right now, Anderson is accused of kidnapping the Canastota woman. Prosecutors are researching the possibility of murder charges in the event Striley never turns up. 26-year-old Robert Leroy Anderson came to court under heavy guard today. A McCook County grand jury is indicting him with the kidnapping of Piper Striley. In court, Anderson pleaded not guilty and asked for a private investigator, which he's getting. At home in Sioux Falls, Anderson's wife is standing by her husband. Elaine Anderson wouldn't talk on camera, saying she doesn't want her 15 minutes of fame to be for something like this. She says her husband wouldn't do anything like he's accused of, but wouldn't say where he was the day Striley was abducted. In this experiment, we showed you how easy it is to give a car a temporary paint job. We changed the color of our van by spraying it with tempera paint. Investigators believe that's how Robert Anderson changed his blue Bronco to black before kidnapping Piper Striley. Now sources tell us there's evidence to back that up. Preliminary tests indicate there are traces of the washable paint on Anderson's truck. Prosecutors are afraid Robert Leroy Anderson would hurt the state's number one witness if he gets out of jail. That's Piper Striley's three-year-old daughter, Shayna. The little girl picked Anderson's picture out of a photo lineup as the bad man who <laughs> took her mother. Conversations Robert Leroy Anderson allegedly had with friends and co-workers seem to point the finger at the Sioux Falls man. Investigators say Glenn Walker and James Hornbeck described conversations they had with Anderson about how to plan, prepare, and carry out a crime like the one Anderson is suspected of. When investigators first looked at Anderson's Bronco the morning after Striley was abducted, they saw a small army shovel with fresh dirt on it inside the Bronco and observed fresh grass underneath the truck. This interview with Robert Anderson happened the day after Piper Striley was kidnapped from her home near Canastota. At the start of the interview, Anderson says the last time he'd been at the Striley residence was Friday, four days before the kidnapping. He says he wanted to sign up his children for Bible camp. Then, Anderson remembers he'd been there the very day the woman was taken. I didn't stop out there yesterday morning, I guess around 11. And, you know, I just pulled in the driveway and then back out. I did not, but there was no answer. And there's nobody again. Probably half hour later, and nobody was there. I tried the outdoor, and it was locked, so I didn't know. It's still early in the interview. I want to go home and sleep. I got to work tonight. I mean, if I'm under arrest, arrest. The McCook County Grand Jury indicates there's more to it. The new indictment charges that Anderson kidnapped Striley to rape her. Striley's three-year-old daughter saw her mother being abducted. Shayna Striley has identified Anderson as the man who took her mommy. But there will be a competency hearing for Shayna before she's able to testify at trial. The judge wants to know if little Shayna knows the difference between telling the truth and telling a lie. Experts are being hired by the state to go over evidence. That includes a piece of duct tape that has human hair and maybe blood stuck to it. State experts say the tape is from a roll of duct tape found in Anderson's Bronco. The hair and blood are undergoing DNA tests to see if they are from Striley. The tape will also be checked for fingerprints. Nine millimeter shell casings will be tested by firearms experts. State experts say several shell casings found in Minnehaha County match the shell casing found near Striley's home in McCook County. Jamie Hammer says in the many hours he rode around with Robert Leroy Anderson at night, his friend talked about kidnapping women. According to Hammer, Anderson wanted to abduct a woman, have sex, kill her, and then get rid of her body. Anderson talked of dismembering his victim's body and scattering it. Hammer says Anderson had a handgun and spoke of using it to frighten women. He would wear gloves and kill witnesses. And Hammer says he was asked three times by Anderson to help him do it. Once, a Sherman woman was the intended victim. 
Another time, it was a woman the men followed into Egan, South Dakota. The third time, a woman hitchhiker the men picked up. According to Hammer, Anderson had specific plans of how he would do all of this. He would use a gun, rope, or handcuffs to hold the woman down. He would rape her, and then he would kill her by either suffocating her, shooting her, or strangling her. And then he would bury her. And Hammer said Anderson planned to cut off her hands, feet, and head so police couldn't identify the woman. A prisoner who once shared a cell with Anderson and Mitchell is also talking. Kevin Gertis says Anderson admitted painting his Bronco black just before Striley disappeared. Anderson told him the only reason the only witness is not with her mother right now is because he didn't think the three-year-old girl could testify against him. And when asked by Gertis whether the Canastota woman will be found, Anderson said she's down so deep they will never find her. The judge said Shane Estriley is an average four-and-a-half-year-old girl who communicates like an average four-and-a-half-year-old girl. Shane Estriley will testify at Anderson's trial next month. Investigators have, in pieces, the shirt Piper Estriley was wearing the day she was abducted from her Canastota home. Half of that shirt was found during a search like this, near Ditch Road, south of Baltic. The shirt was dirty, torn, and had pieces of duct tape on it. The torn edges of the tape matched duct tape found in Anderson's home. Hair stuck to the tape matches hair left in Striley's brush. The other half of Striley's shirt was found just hours after Striley was kidnapped last July. It was discovered by a man from Sioux Falls who was on his way to a funeral. He stuffed it under the seat of his car until last December when investigators asked for the public's help in locating possible evidence. Investigators believe Anderson wrapped duct tape over Striley's eyes and mouth and held her down by chaining or handcuffing her to a four-foot square board mounted in the back of his Bronco. There's scientific proof tonight to a prosecution theory in Piper Striley's alleged kidnapping. Jurors in Robert Leroy Anderson's trial in Aberdeen saw that scientific proof late this afternoon. That's where Kello Land's Jessica Armstrong is, and she joins us now live. Steve, suspicion that Anderson changed his, the color of his truck is over. Traces of black paint can now be traced to Anderson. Rex Reese, the director of the state forensic lab, found black paint in nine different places on Robert Leroy Anderson's Bronco. According to Reese, the paint is just like the washable paint Anderson is believed to have purchased at Ben Franklin Crafts. Prosecutors contend Anderson painted his blue Bronco black the day he allegedly kidnapped Piper Striley. And to prove their point, the scientists conducted an experiment, much like the one Kelloland News did last summer. They painted a vehicle with black tempera paint. In mind, there's still no body and nobody charged with murder. But this evening, the chain of evidence linking Robert Leroy Anderson to the Canastota woman's disappearance is tightening. Kelloland's Jessica Armstrong is live in Aberdeen, where jurors are becoming instant experts on odds and DNA. That's right. It's been a day of slow technical testimony. If you believe the latest in scientific testing, it means one of two things. Either Piper Striley was in Anderson's Bronco, or it's an astronomical coincidence. The fate of accused kidnapper and rapist Robert Anderson is now in the hands of the jury. Events took a surprising turn this afternoon. Jessica Armstrong has been covering the trial all through its entirety and joins us now live from Aberdeen. What happened today, Jess? Well, Doug, closing arguments lasted two and a half hours today. In them, Attorney General Mark Barnett made an emotional appeal to jurors, showing them what's left of Piper Striley, hairs. He talked about all the evidence against Robert Leroy Anderson, but defense attorneys, Anderson's own attorneys, did not make any closing arguments today. Is, is that common at all for one side not to make a closing argument? No, that isn't common. And Larry Long, a prosecutor with the state attorney general's office, said in all of his years of prosecuting, he's never seen it done. Our top story tonight on Kelloland News, a jury in Aberdeen finding Robert Leroy Anderson of Sioux Falls guilty of kidnapping and rape in the abduction last summer of Piper Striley of Canastota. Kelloland's Jessica Armstrong is live in Aberdeen. Jess? Yes, Steve, we just got done talking to Attorney General Mark Barnett, who was in talking to the jurors, asking them a little bit about why the delay, why it took not so long, but why it took a little bit. Um, Barnett said that the jurors were going over the evidence. They wanted, they even asked for rubber gloves so they could pick up the evidence and look at it. After Robert Leroy Anderson was taken away in a bulletproof vest, his victim's parents spoke out. Not really a happy time for us. I mean, so he's in prison, so what? 
uh, we're still left with the same thing. We didn't get our daughter back, did we? I want him tried for murder. And I want him to get the death penalty, and I want the state to carry it out. Even if it takes 20 years, I want him to carry it out. Piper Striley's mother sat through every day of the five-week-long process, but Piper's father was barred from the proceedings almost from the beginning. Basically, I told Mark Burnett, that's what I told you, I want him dead. Piper Striley's husband, Vance, chose not to speak on camera, but told me he's satisfied with the verdict. But this case is far from over. Piper Striley's body has not been found, and prosecutors believe there is another victim dead at the same man's hands. Yes, we believe that uh, he's involved in the disappearance of Larissa Demansky, as well as, of course, Piper Striley. Uh, and uh, so we'll be looking for both women and hoping that they're in the same place. One trial over, maybe two more to go for Robert Leroy Anderson. Investigators are using every possible method to find Piper Striley and Larissa Domanski. Much of it will come from this angle, from the air. The equipment on this helicopter best detects live bodies, also movement, but it's hoped it will also help in the search for Domanski and Striley. Lake Vermilion, just over the Minnehaha County line in McCook County. Since an infrared helicopter scanned it last night, it's been the scene of an intense search. One that's had the delicacy of an archaeological dig, and there are results in the buckets. Kelloland's Jessica Armstrong has been at the scene all day, right up until things broke wide open just an hour ago. Jessica? Steve, I'm on the east side of Lake Vermilion. We're just a few miles from Piper Striley's home, and all the work of over a dozen investigators has centered right behind me at those bushes. Investigators believe this pile of dirt was once the grave of Larissa Demansky. The Sioux Falls woman disappeared almost three years ago, but today bone fragments that may be Demansky's have been unearthed. Over a dozen investigators dug and sifted through the soil, trying to find evidence this was once a grave. We do not have a uh, complete skeleton, okay? Uh, what we have, uh, frankly, is uh, what was a grave at one time. Barnett has already said Robert Leroy Anderson may be a suspect in Demansky's disappearance, and this very area was Anderson's playground. Larissa Demansky's name came up in that seven-hour police interview with Robert Leroy Anderson last summer. At the time, they were questioning Anderson about Piper Striley's disappearance, but he also talked about Larissa Demansky and her husband, Bill. Police, deputies, troopers, and other officers from across South Dakota covered the east side of Lake Vermilion. They spent over four hours combing the ground and by mid-afternoon, in the rain, called it a day. Robert Leroy Anderson has practically paved his own path to death row. He led police here to his mother's house. This is where evidence that ties Anderson to Piper Striley and Larissa Demansky was found, hidden in the basement ceiling. It included jewelry. The necklace has been identified as Larissa Demansky's necklace. It was looped through and through a ring which has been identified as Piper Striley's ring. Anderson's prison cellmate says the Sioux Falls man proudly shared the grisly details of Striley's strangulation and Demansky's suffocation. Anderson allegedly was looking for someone to kill his childhood friend, 27-year-old Glenn Walker. Walker was the one who brought investigators here to Demansky's grave at Lake Vermilion. That's where a finger, toe, and other bones, clothes, and sandals from Demansky were found. Anderson claims Walker was in on Demansky's abduction and burial. Anderson's prison roommate had more to share. Anderson told him where he dumped Striley's body in the river east of Sioux Falls, not in the Baltic area where searchers had been focusing. It could be deposited uh, up in a tree uh, during the flooding. You know, it could be deposited on the shoreline or out in, in you know, what is now a cornfield. Uh, I have to be honest with you that I think the prospects of recovering any more uh, of their bodies is probably not real good. But searchers are not giving up and will resume their efforts next week in the Big Sioux, east of Sioux Falls. The families of those two young women appreciate that. It's like having a small child and 
and somebody taking it off and never being able to see it, so you don't know exactly what happened. The victim's families, investigators, and prosecutors agree the death penalty is appropriate. Mr. Anderson deserves death. He took a life, and he's going to have to give his in return. Striley and Demansky's husband echo those sentiments. I talked with both Bill Demansky and Vance Striley. Neither one of them wanted to talk on camera, saying it didn't serve a purpose anymore. It wouldn't change the outcome. Both of them lost their wife. They both lost the mother to their children. Next week, Anderson will officially be charged out of McCook County. He's already serving a life sentence for kidnapping Striley. The trial will be another expense for taxpayers, but McCook County State's attorney said money is not the issue. Is just kidnapping sufficient for what he's done to two ladies in the state of South Dakota? I think uh, if a person has to be honest with himself, he'd say no. And then there's the possibility Anderson's life for the lives of two young women. Still an unfair exchange, according to the friends and family of two young mothers. Some were on duty, others volunteered their time, but they all headed out with the same purpose, to find 27-year-old Piper Striley. 75 men and women spent the day along the banks of the Big Sioux. Searchers are looking here because this is the spot Robert Leroy Anderson allegedly told his cellmate he dumped Striley after he raped and strangled her. Robert Leroy Anderson allegedly bragged to his prison cellmate of his crimes, and Jeremy Bruner tattled. Those prison conversations are what led to the murder, kidnapping, and rape charges against Anderson in the disappearance of Piper Striley and Larissa Demansky. Ever since he snitched, Bruner's been living in protective custody in a cell all by himself. It's the safest place in the prison, according to the warden. You know, I didn't want these little girls to grow up, the kids growing up, not knowing where mommy was, you know, I mean. Sitting in a local motel, Jeremy Bruner talks about why he came forward. One reason is obvious. Sharing what Robert Leroy Anderson told him in their prison cell got Bruner out of prison four years early. But Bruner says there's more to it. I mean, if someone like this got away with it and got out and did it again, that would, that, I, I couldn't live with that. Over 10 days in August, Bruner says Anderson told him all here in the prison cell they shared how Anderson kidnapped, raped, killed, and got rid of Larissa Demansky and Piper Striley. Robert Leroy Anderson sits in the hot seat, but it is those who will be seated as jurors in this trial that carry the weight of the case. Did Anderson kill Piper Striley and Larissa Demansky? If he did, should he die? The list of witnesses at this trial looks to be a long one. For the state, there are five pages like this of possible witnesses. For the defense, close to 100 possible witnesses. It's taken six weeks to select jurors for the trial. The trial itself is expected to last at least that long. Bill Demansky's face has appeared on the news before, telling his wife Larissa that he loves her and wants her to come home. But today, the Sioux Falls man knows his wife won't ever share their Sioux Falls home again. Demansky was 29 the night she disappeared as she was leaving her job at the night shift at John Morrell. Larissa had just gotten her braces off that day and was anxious to show her new smile to her husband. She told him, you wouldn't believe how beautiful I am. Bill Demansky told jurors, I never got to see that beauty. Three years passed before Demansky learned what happened to his wife when her remains were found in a grave at Lake Vermilion. Investigators found no big bones. Prosecutors say Anderson had already removed them. But they did find one tooth, a rib bone, much of Larissa's right foot, some of it still in her sock. There were even toenails with nail polish still on them. Pieces of Larissa Demansky's clothing were found in the grave by the chokecherry bush, the metal buttons from her jeans, her sandals, a bracelet, and one pearl earring. Robert Leroy Anderson allegedly told his former cellmate he liked watching Larissa Demansky struggle with the duct tape, duct tape around her mouth and nose that eventually suffocated her. Of Piper Striley, Anderson said he enjoyed looking into the Canastota woman's eyes, but was upset because she didn't struggle more. Anderson is already serving a life sentence for kidnapping Striley, handcuffing her, and snatching her away as her young children watched. Much of what's being said in this fourth floor courtroom has been heard before, specifically in Anderson's kidnapping trial in 1997. Well, the courtroom here this morning has been heavy with emotion at times. Vance Striley this morning took the stand. 
Looking directly at the jurors, he first calmly described the days before his wife was kidnapped, the visit by Anderson to their trailer three days before Piper was abducted, his son's second birthday, the day before Piper was allegedly killed, what turned out to be the family's last photograph with Piper. Sitting in the new pup tent, two-year-old Nathan had just been given for his birthday. But it was Striley's testimony about the minutes after finding out his wife had disappeared that had many in the courtroom crying. Striley described coming to his trailer and seeing his two-year-old son wiped out, in his words, and unresponsive, and then seeing three-year-old Shana totally the opposite, ecstatic, babbling, and chattering. Then Striley repeats what his little girl told him, that mommy's going to die, she's not coming back. She kept insisting he was a mean man, that she left with a man in a black car. She kept insisting mommy's not coming back. Jessica, so far, are you seeing any differences in the testimony in this trial compared to Anderson's kidnapping trial almost two years ago now? Well, yes, there has been. In, in that trial, I remember distinctly Vance discussing the relationship with his wife. He described her as his best friend the love of his life. There hasn't been questioning like that with Vance Striley or with, with uh, Bill Demansky yesterday. So far, the questions from prosecutors have been pretty straightforward, pretty much about the facts. Good afternoon. Testimony this morning in Robert Leroy Anderson's trial has been painful to listen to. Again, it concerns statements made by three-year-old Shana Striley, hours after her mother was kidnapped from her home, right in front of her children. Kettle Lance Jessica Armstrong is live now at the Minnehaha County Courthouse with the latest. Jessica, what's being said this morning? Well, Don, it was testimony this morning that had some jurors and members of the audience in tears. Testimony this morning came from Piper Striley's co-worker, Patty Sinclair. Sinclair called Striley's after Piper didn't show up for work that afternoon. A little girl answered at Shana's, at Striley's home, Shana. Sinclair asked Shana if her mommy, daddy, or a babysitter was there. She said no. As Sinclair paused, trying to figure out what may be going on, Shana seemed to talk to someone off the phone, her two-year-old brother, Nathan. Shana was talking very quietly. She said, they probably killed. Then the little girl said, well, bye-bye, and hung up. Sinclair called back, quizzing Shana. She asked if her mommy left with somebody. This time, Shana was crying and said she went with a car, man with a black car. Live from Kelloland Television, midday in Kelloland. Good afternoon. Jurors in Robert Leroy Anderson's double murder trial are hearing how evidence in Piper Striley's kidnapping slowly came together. Chris Reitzma is the state's expert on hair and fibers. It took most of the day to do it, but the criminalist detailed what was found and its significance. In the Bronco, Reitzma concluded 29 of the hairs found were similar to hair from Piper Striley's hairbrush. She found a tiny scrap of black and white fabric. Black and white threads were discovered on a defect in a folding knife and a glove had a white animal hair on it. The hair could have come from Chase, the Striley dog. Jurors saw over 300 pieces of evidence, many exhibits. They heard from 92 witnesses for the state, 12 for the defense, before both sides told them they have nothing more to offer. After closing arguments on Monday, jurors will be handed the case. If they decide Anderson killed Striley or Demansky, they'll hear witnesses for and against the death penalty. Two jurors were in tears today as Attorney General Mark Barnett displayed all that's left of two young mothers, two women Robert Leroy Anderson is accused of murdering. Kelloland's Jessica Armstrong was there for the final arguments that brought much of the courtroom to tears. This is how he waits, sitting alone in a jail cell with his head bowed. Robert Leroy Anderson spends hours like this, motionless, waiting for his only outing to court. But there was emotion in the courtroom today. It came as the state's lead prosecutor displayed all that is left of Piper Striley and Larissa Demansky. Jurors saw blown up photographs of the young women smiling, surrounded by their husband and children. For Striley, those remains are hairs and a t-shirt carved in half. On the second table, bones from Demansky's grave, a rusted earring, finger, and toenails with bottles of Demansky's polish right next to them. He picked up the duct tape, wrapped around a bone and said, this is Larissa's wrist and Bob's duct tape. Barnett said, this scene is real. It's about Larissa. It's about Piper and the bits and pieces of them we have left. 
It is now decision time for jurors in the alleged serial killer's trial in Sioux Falls. Closing arguments are over in the Robert Leroy Anderson double murder trial. Jessica Armstrong is at the Minnehaha County Courthouse with the latest. Jess? Just five minutes ago, jurors in this case were handed the case. As a matter of fact, it took all day to do it, but they finally got the case, as I said, at 455 today. At the end of the state's arguments, two jurors today were crying. Our top story tonight is guilt. Guilty, 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 and guilty for Robert Leroy Anderson. Anderson kidnapped and murdered Larissa Demansky. He raped and murdered Piper Striley. Kelloland's Jessica Armstrong was in the courtroom when the verdict came in early this afternoon. She leads off our four-part team report. Steve, it took jurors eight and a half hours to make their decision. But when those six men and six women walked into the packed courtroom, you could almost hear everyone's heart pounding. Five years have slowly ticked away as Larissa Demansky's husband has waited for answers. It's been three years for Piper Striley's husband and family. Robert Leroy Anderson has known all along. Now the rest of the world knows too. Anderson kidnapped and suffocated Larissa Demansky. He raped and strangled Piper Striley. As the clerk read the jury's verdict, some family members quietly cried. And with slight smiles on their faces, the widowed husband's Look to the man who brought misery to their happy families. As for Anderson, nothing. No emotion, not even flushed cheeks. He wasn't ready to talk after the verdict. No, I don't talk to camera. Now those, those jurors are at home tonight getting a break from the case, but they'll be back here tomorrow to hear why the state says Anderson should die. It's gonna be a good day. After all the painful ones, finally some pleasure for the family and friends of the two young women Robert Anderson tortured and killed. Anderson's face was pasty white as jurors filed in. They were dry-eyed and glanced from Anderson to the victim's families back to the serial killer they convicted. Anderson showed no emotion as he was told his life will be taken for taking the lives of Larissa Demansky and Piper Striley. He is the most cowardly man that uh, I've ever had the misfortune to come across. Uh, he is entirely gutless. He is effeminate. And he is a perverted, murderous. That familiar smirk still lined Anderson's face as he headed to his home on the hill, the penitentiary. He laughed as he headed to a new cell on death row. Cell number 58 will be all he has until a date is set for Anderson's syringe full of death. In the meantime, Anderson has some adjusting to do. And this afternoon, Anderson took his first walk down this hallway as the death row inmate. He went to visit his mother. He had a guard on either side of him and two right behind him. That's the most company he'll have until he dies.